All right, well, I guess New Jersey's still out of power. It's really early uh, Tuesday morning, so I'm not really getting Tuesday news. Oh, actually, I am, because it's like 11 on the West Coast now. Um, I East Coast. So, and uh, in the morning. So, um, but anyway, so I guess a lot of New Jersey's still out of power now. Gary, as many of you may know, was in Stickham, I guess, and lost power. And it hasn't been heard from since. Um, I made a, gear, a video to Gary, and I actually thought he would be on. I made a little joke about him not knowing I agree with him, but he knows I agree with him on this. Um, but it's just a power outage. Um, so, you know, I, I choose to figure Gary can probably handle living without power. But it's also not just Gary. There's all these people in New Jersey, uh, at least... Um, maybe elsewhere in the East Coast. I was looking to see if the power was still out in New Jersey this morning. I don't talk about the county Gary's in, but there's a lot of counties around there that that are having uh, still out of power. So, um, yeah, you know, this is this is our infrastructure. You know, when I was growing up. You know, you'd have an earthquake somewhere in the world, and it's an amazing amount of people, thousands of people would die. We'd have a terrible earthquake, and we'd be like, and dead. And um, that's infrastructure. You know, a tropical storm, or even a hurricane, um, you know, it's not an infinite amount of strength. You can never, you know, protect yourself 100% of the time. But this is getting ridiculous. Um... You know, we have a hurricane, lose a whole city, a whole city. You know, we what? You know, New Orleans. What? You know, I mean that's that's because when you have infrastructure, that's that feeling of strength, that feeling America was invulnerable. That that's because we had infrastructure. You know, if you let the potholes, oh, there's a few potholes on there, no big deal. You just drive around. Yeah, and then a storm comes and rips that part of the road out because of that pothole is the thing that catches the wind and what the wind gets underneath it. You know, it's just... You need to make strong infrastructure. Then you have a reasonable remnant. You'd be surprised how much you could do with it. You start off with a remnant of an infrastructure. It's back to nature. It's back to nature. Yeah, what are you going to do when they put out the, the power for months and months and months? Um... Yeah, it's just a, a sad thing that, that this nation, it's, it's a personality disorder. I don't understand how that that could possibly be me projecting. I mean, this is not sane. That, that we think we can spend $12 billion a month in Iraq alone. Or maybe it's 14. Somebody corrected me the other day. It's 14. Well, you know, they divide it out. They give it in big $80 billion chunks, and you can divide it out what it's per month. But um, we could spend that and go, it's got to be done. It's got to be done because they had nothing to do with attacking us, but we were attacked. It's got to be done. God, it's got to be done. Any price. You know, our kids are failing. And it's too expensive. They can't expect to hand out in this. It's a bullet in their chest. You know? It's like, we don't have enough money for the state... What are we going to do? Oh, let's furlough the teachers. That's what they did here. Uh, teachers, you get Friday off. Kids, too, Friday off. Parents with kids also better take Friday off, I guess. Yeah, that's great for the economy. That works awesome. You know, um, why is it like, we must go to war if you don't want to go blow up Iraq here against America? It's like, how about if I'm for making redundant power systems and, you know, roads and, you know, storm bunkers and flood safe housing and, you know, what, what is your, what is the problem, America? What is your problem? That, that to you, it makes perfect sense to spend money, just crazy weird amounts of money, blowing up people, handing Iraq over to the Iranians, basically. probably at best. And now Libya. 
And what? By what logic can someone think, well, this just pressing cost is no matter. When your kids starving in the street, you know. <coughs> I'm sure Gary can handle losing power, you know. Um, there might be more to it, you know, if there's enough wind to put out power, tree could come over. So yeah, you know, it's a bit of concern. But there's old people living in New Jersey too who maybe can't, you know, go without power. And when our infrastructure gets so weak that it's not just even a day or two, but it's a week or two or months, okay, then we're going into winter with no power. But what are you going to do? There's not enough shelter do any backup plans you need you know I don't know how it is in the rest of the country but I'm from California and poor area rich area whatever you know power outages last an hour or two if the power outage is overnight it's like what even from a storm if it's longer than a day that starts to be what you know that the storm's over you know maybe it would be out until the storm's done and then a couple hours later, you know, it's basically, um, it gives you this impression that these things are robust, but of course they're not naturally robust. They're naturally very complicated and even, you know, delicate might be the right word. They only become robust if you take these delicate parts, you, you protect them and make them redundant and you overbuild a little bit. Basically you overbuild so that when the inevitable destruction of some percentage of your system happens, well, if you're 40% overbuilt and you have a terrible, devastating storm that takes out 10% of your electricity capacity, well, then you have resources. You know, and some of those lines are cut, but you have plenty of extra power uh, going into this network. You can run an emergency line some weird way around the back or whatever it takes, you know, depending what the bridges are out and what the trees are over, you know, you could put up temporary uh, generators and plug them into the network if you have the right kind of network you can do all sorts of things if you focus on that you know but we're never going to get the inspiration of how to make a really awesome reliable infrastructure um, killing other people and it's sad too because America had a great engineering attitude and we went into this big we're so exceptional we're so lovely around the same time and eventually, we just thought, wait, it's not our infrastructure that's great. We're just great. We don't even have to spend money on this infrastructure. We'll still be great. And, but we'll, you know, hundreds of us will die when there's a windstorm. And thousands will go without power for days or who knows, weeks. Yeah, I want you all to do the math. $12 billion a month. Okay, what is that? That's a billion dollars to your state every three months if it was just distributed. That's making up your shortfalls. That's making up so you don't have to send teachers home on Fridays. Okay, that's some significant cash right there. And when you spend it on bombs that blow up and disappear, you just, it just disappears. But if you build a road, you know, if you spend a hundred million dollars on a giant highway, that's there for 30 years, 50 years, you know, depending on maintenance, you know, obviously as long as you want. But I mean, if you just built it and left it, it'd be brand new for 10 years, probably need nothing unless there was some huge earthquake, ordinary earthquakes, ordinary back and forth traffic. You think you built something that's going to last 10 years in Iraq in a good sense for America? It's going to be throwing the flowers. I guess they'll start any day now, throwing flowers, and then they'll just do it for 10 years. And can we drive to work on that? So anyway, I, I hope Gary's fine, and I, I figure he probably is fine, but still my sympathies for this uh, this hassle, and um, of course my fears go with, with many of the people that, that really their survival is probably, uh, is, is seriously threatened. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I still presume there is probably fine and can handle it, but uh, yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, 
you know, and I'm sure now in the in those counties, people are hassling the the, the power workers. Like, hurry up! You better get it done. Well, it's not them. It's upfront engineering. You know, the thing that makes the power come on in a day is not that you got the most brilliant, um, you know, line workers. You may or you may not. It's your preparation. It's your preparation so that your your uh, qualified line workers can go out there and go, oh, look, test, test, test. This one's the one fucked up. We put that off. We put it in a separate line. We have an extra line over here. There are no extra lines. There is no extra engineering. We're just winging it. And we think because America's special that we're still going to be better. Like when our infrastructure is worse than that of, you know, the third world, we're... I guess we could go, but we're still better. It's just that there's an earthquake and 50,000 of us die. You know, you want to have pride in something, you have to support that something. We're a strong nation, but we can't even take a hiccup now. Well, anyway, uh, good luck to everybody in New Jersey that's having this problem and wherever else in the East Coast that they're still having this problem. When I searched it, it comes up with the New Jersey one, so I think that's where they're talking about still out of power. It's just ridiculous. And, um, you know, and that's the other thing, too. You know, Gary's in a pretty wealthy area. So, you know, these wealthy people are like, screw the general infrastructure. We'll just make it nice here in our little town. So, oh, electricity is a big cooperative thing, and now we're fucked. Oh, yeah, the, the wealthy don't seem to get that <laughs> they're on the same infrastructure as us. You know, they're not, they can't have, a, unless they have a nation-sized gated community, there is, you know, we're, it's a national, inf we're sharing infrastructure. The rich people don't seem to understand that. Like, well, I'll just have a generator. Ooh, oh, where's the gas going to come from? I mean, you guys, ugh. Anyway, I'm sure Gary's probably fine, but America is not.